In a paper that came out in October of 2022, but I just came across recently, researchers from Aberdeen, MIT, the University of Tübingen, and others have discovered that the size of the data set matters a lot more than the number of parameters in large language models, and this might actually apply to full self-driving as well. Let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. Of course, I will leave a link to the original paper in the description if you want to read it. Here, I'm just going to read the abstract and touch on a few major points that will have to do with what I wanna talk about, which is the question of whether the models matter more, the large language models slash full self-driving autonomy models matter more, or the large data sets matter more. When it comes to teaching either a large language model or an autonomous vehicle software to drive properly. So let's begin by reading the paper. It's titled, Will We Run Out of Data? An Analysis of the Limits of Scaling Data Sets in Machine Learning. The abstract says, we analyze the growth of data set sizes used in machine learning for natural language processing and computer vision and extrapolate these using two methods, using the historical growth rate and estimating the computer optimal data set size for future predicted compute budgets. We investigate the growth in data usage by estimating the total stock of unlabeled data available on the internet over the coming decades. Our analysis indicates that the stock of high quality language data will be exhausted soon, likely before 2020. 26, which is a little bit scary there. By contrast, the stock of low quality language data and image data will be exhausted only much later, between 2030 and 2050 for low quality language and between 2030 and 2060 for images. Our work suggests that the current trend of ever growing machine learning models that rely on enormous data sets might slow down if data efficiency is not drastically improved or new sources of data become available. All right, so let's discuss this abstract in a little bit more detail. That's pretty dense, as abstracts generally are. Okay, so the first thing is they talk about large language models and what they call computer vision, but what they actually are talking about is generative art, things like that, the ability to absorb images, to be able to create new images, something like Dolly 2 or Mid Journey or Stable Diffusion, things like that. So it's not what you might think when you read this is that this has to do with full self-driving, but that actually doesn't, which is the, what I'm going to talk about. That's my addition to this whole thing. But anyway, so they're talking about with those two things that the trend has been for these large language models and other things that are related to it to increase in size. So GPT-2, if I'm remembering correctly was on the order of 15 billion parameters or something. That was the number of little knobs in the model. GPT-3 went up to 174, 175 billion parameters. So it was like a 10x bigger size model than the original GPT-2 was. And then GPT-4 has just come out and nobody knows exactly what it is, but there is a guess that it's somewhere around 500 billion parameters. That speculation nobody knows because OpenAI is now ironically named and they don't say anything about what they do anymore. They just sell their product to people. But clearly the trend is to make these models bigger and bigger. And there are models out there that are over a trillion parameters, which is a very, very large language model. It takes a long time to train these models because they're so big. They are very expensive to run because they're so big. So there's a lot of negatives and downsides to building these models, but the, the general kind of heuristic or rule of thumb has been that as you make these models bigger, they can train better. This paper is an argument against that. What they're saying instead is that what we need actually is better quality data and bigger data sets, and that the internet, which is the source of most language data, is actually running out of high quality language stuff. Now, what do they mean by high quality versus low quality? Low quality could be things like chat transcripts or, you know, kind of garbagey, uh, you know, text that hasn't really been parsed very carefully, is not written well, uh, you know, it just is bad for one reason or another. So there's a lot of that out there, but the quality data that has actually been sort of like looked at and vetted to make sure that it's a reasonable kind of data and that it's got good quality and the writing quality is good and the ideas expressed are good and the factuality is good, all of that kind of stuff is only about a little bit bigger, like less than one order of magnitude bigger than what we've got currently in our training sets. So there's not a lot of room to grow is what they're claiming. They're saying like, look, we need to grow this data set really big because as they show in the paper, the quality of the model actually has much more to do with the quality of the data set and the size of the data set than it does with the size of the model itself. That's their big takeaway from this. 
So a few key points from the paper itself. Here they say, however, language models are usually trained on high quality data. Again, that's the idea that this has been vetted and carefully you know, looked at. Obviously not every single word, but they've looked at the sources and they've looked at the factuality. And generally speaking, it's good quality data. The stock of high quality language data is between 4.6 e to the 12th and 1.7 e to the 13th words, which is about 4.6 to 17 trillion words, which is less than one order of magnitude larger than the largest data sets. And that means if people training these models want to increase the size of their data set by 10, they're going to be scraping the bottom of the barrel for the high quality stuff. That's that's about all there is. And if they want to increase the data set size by 100, they literally can't do that because there's not enough data out there right now to increase the data set size by 100. And then the researchers go on to say vision data is orders of magnitude larger than the largest data sets, so they won't run out for a while for decades. What they're saying here is that there's more vision data, so there's more room to grow the data sets for vision, for training that kind of a thing, than there is for large language models. But very importantly, we're not talking about driving data here. We're talking about pictures on the internet and stuff, digitized pictures. So, so just set that aside for a moment and I'll finish up talking about the paper. So next point, we have projected the growth of training data set sizes and data stocks. Data stocks grow at a much slower pace than data set sizes. So if current trends continue, data sets will eventually stop growing due to data exhaustion. Our models show this is likely to happen between 2030 and 2040 for language data and between 2030 and 2060 for vision data. In addition, high quality language data will be exhausted by 2026. And that's the scary part right there because that's just a couple of years from now. If our assumptions are correct, data will become the main bottleneck for scaling ML models and we might see a slowdown in AI progress as a result. However, as outlined, there are multiple reasons to doubt that these trends will continue as projected, such as the possibility of algorithmic innovations in data efficiency. So first of all, what they mean by data stock is just literally the amount of words on the internet. And high quality words take a long time to produce. You know, if you think about it, like all the great writers in English, like, you know, Shakespeare, James Joyce, William Faulkner, uh, all the British writers in the 19th century, they wrote a lot of words, you know, Charles Dickens, etc. In fact, Charles Dickens is over here. <laughs> a bunch of Charles Dickens books from my grandfather. Anyway, so, but you know, you've got all of this stuff that exists and that was easy because that was just stuff that already existed on the internet. So you suck it in. But the problem is who's creating the new high quality data. There's not that much of that happening right now. So what they're saying is that the stock is growing very, very slowly of high quality language data, but the data sets are getting bigger because they're just eating everything that's available. So if the trends continue, the, the, the data set size is going to eventually bump up against the edge of all available high quality language data in all of the languages on the planet. So we're going to run out of stuff at that point. So that's it's an interesting problem. They are saying that, you know, algorithmic changes like more efficiency with the models, more efficiency with training, things like that could countermand that, but that they foresee data as the major potential bottleneck for continuing the exponential rise rise in ability of these large language models and vision models. So what does this mean for autonomous driving? You can probably figure that stuff out yourself, making a relationship between these two. There's a reasonable expectation that this would also hold true for the data that is used for self-driving. So what you've got is you've got a large model, right? We've got, I don't know how many billions of parameters, but in your car, there's models with a lot of parameters in them that are being utilized to drive the vehicle if you're driving in full self-driving beta or even the old version, or if you're using mobile eye or several other autonomy options out there. But the problem is that those things, you can't just keep increasing the size of those models and just expect them to continue to get better. What you need to do is provide it with a lot of high quality data in order for it to train. So what that means is going off of this paper and also stuff that we've heard from Tesla and other people, including George Hotz with Comma AI, is that data is the major bottleneck, right? They can create these new architectures and they can work on them, but without enough data to train on, they can't get these things to the quality level that they need to be. And again, remember these large language models, if you ask it the right questions or do something stupid or give it a glitch word or something like that, they will fail. And that's okay with a large language model. It doesn't, it's not going to cause anybody to die. <laughs> Whereas with a car, if it fails, it could cause somebody to be injured or die. So 
there's a criticality to this where the bar is super, super high with full self-driving. So you need to have excellent quality data. You need to discover the bottleneck and you need to work through the bottleneck. And if the bottleneck is data, there is literally nobody else in the world who's even close to where Tesla is. But the question is, is Tesla close enough to the amount of data that they need to be able to train to the quality level that is expected for a vehicle that's operating in the real world and that can hurt or kill people? So just to do a little back of the envelope math here, if we have 100 million miles of, of data, of full self-driving beta data that, that Tesla has pulled in, and the average speed is 45 miles per hour for all of that data, and then the number of frames per second that the cameras are pulling in and that the board is analyzing and all of that stuff is approximately 36 frames per second, that 100 million miles produces somewhere around 8 billion frames of data. So that's 8 billion, which sounds like an awful lot. But remember, when we're looking at these data sets, they're looking at somewhere around 5 trillion words of data. So if you can you know, <laughs> a frame of, of data is not necessarily equivalent to a word of data, but you know, let's just, we're just doing rough math here. But anyway, what we're looking at is three orders of magnitude, right? We're going from 8 billion to somewhere around 5 trillion. So we have to have a thousand times more data. And what that means is that there is a lot more data that even a company like Tesla would have to pull in to be able to get to that amount of data for training. Again, just very roughly, that means that they would need somewhere around 100 billion miles of driving to create an equivalent data set, a data set of the equivalent size of what we're seeing with the large language model stock that's out there, the high quality data that's out there. And just to go from the 8 billion frames of data that Tesla could collect on these things to 80 billion, just to go up one order of magnitude, we're looking at needing somewhere around 10x the number of cars or some combination of 10x the number of miles driven or something like that. But that means we could be looking at needing something like 30 million cars on the road to go up one order of magnitude. So we're looking at these numbers start to become very, very large very, very quickly. And so the problem, even for a company like Tesla that is collecting, you know, orders and orders of magnitude more than any other manufacturer out there doing autonomy is can they collect enough data efficiently enough and quickly enough to actually train these models to the level that they will perform in a superhuman manner. So clearly Tesla is not going to get to 100 billion miles of driving anytime soon, but there are some, you know, there's some wiggle room with all of this stuff because again, Tesla is not using unlabeled data. They are mostly creating labeled data because they've got these automated labeling systems that work with computers. So they can use very, very large compute clusters to create the labeled data sets that they need, which means that the data is going to be more efficient for training. And of course, they can also go out and pull specific things that they need, which is a little bit more difficult to do with the giant internet. I mean, you can do Google searches and stuff like that in an automated fashion, but you know, Tesla is able, they've got an amazing ability to say like, we're seeing problems with stop signs that are facing 45 degrees and the car's thinking that that's a stop sign that's for my road, but it's actually for the other road. And they can pull that and they can go out and get, you know, tens or hundreds of thousands of examples of that and train on that and improve their models. And then also, of course, we've got architectural changes that can happen. Tesla is always playing around with the architecture of their, their neural network models to see what is going to work better. Very famously at AI Day 2, John Emmons, and I did a video about this, talked about using large language models, the, the idea behind it, the syntax behind it, to actually help cars drive through complex intersections. So, you know, they're always playing around with the architecture to make it better. So, you know, my assumption here is that Tesla is not going to need 100 billion miles of driving data in order to get to the point where they are driving at superhuman levels, what they're going to need is, is more targeted, more high quality data, and just lots of it, but not orders of magnitude more than that. That's my humble opinion about this. But at any rate, we're looking at a situation where tens of billions of frames of data is really necessary. And, and this paper, you know, even if it doesn't perfectly analogize between the large language models and generative vision and autonomy, it still is an important element of this. The data set is king. And the only company in the world that is collecting this kind of data is Tesla. You could say Mobileye is doing that and they are collecting some of this data, but I don't believe 
believe that they are collecting anything like the massive quantity of data. And they also don't have the capability of flagging very specific needs that they want in order to get specific data that they're interested in. And also Mobileye doesn't have this incredibly sophisticated auto labeling setup. And as far as I know, Mobileye doesn't have the ability to do high quality simulations to generate multiple versions of very, very rare edge cases. So Tesla is an incredibly unique position. And if anybody is going to be able to solve it, if data is in fact the bottleneck and it's not architectural and it's not building out the bigger and bigger and bigger models. And that's actually a good thing for Tesla because of course, remember, you got to run this stuff on mobile computing, right? Not my phone, but the thing that's in the car, the hardware three, hardware four, it's got to run. The inference engine has to run on a portable computer, a small computer. So small models are actually good. So this is actually all to the good for Tesla. It means collect the data and you can run relatively small models in the car and those models can perform at very, very high levels of quality. And actually, if you didn't see my video on this about Alpaca, you can check that out as well. And that talks about how you can use these very sophisticated large language models with very, very high numbers of parameters to train ones with much, much like orders of magnitude fewer parameters to perform at nearly the same quality level as these large language models. So anyway, we're looking at a situation here where it's becoming very, very clear that data is absolutely the bottleneck and it's the most important part. And without a doubt, Tesla is the only company in the world that is collecting the type and quality of data and the ability to label that data of anybody in the world. So if anybody's going to solve autonomy, it's going to be Tesla. Now, you could always question whether that's even a solvable problem, and that is a reasonable question to ask at this point. It's very, very difficult. But, you know, guessing that somebody else, anybody else besides Tesla is going to do it at this point is a, just a no-brainer. It's absolutely not possible. If anybody's going to solve it, it's going to be Tesla. They have the best engineers. They have the best quality data. They have the most quality data. They're, all of their cars are constantly collecting data, and they they have the ability to grab whatever the most important data is and put it into the training system and get lots of it and even create simulated versions of that to create variations and things. So they are really the only ones set up for success in this business. And here's to the amazing work that Tesla's AI team is doing. Good job, folks. Here's to getting to superhuman driving soon. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it fun and interesting and thought-provoking. If you did, please do like it so other people can find it, and of course, consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. I appreciate the discussions we have. And of course, if you want to join the team, just check out the link in the description. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have TeslaBot t-shirts the Tesla meme t-shirt, success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells. All of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And finally, don't forget, we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how going shopping for a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.